Hello guys. So now we shall be discussing regarding the internal thoracic artery. Okay. So we shall look at the branches of the internal thoracic artery. Now regarding the branches of these internal thoracic artery, first of all, uh, let me draw the sternum as well as the intercostal spaces and then we shall discuss in detail these branches of the internal thoracic artery. Okay. Now, if you look at the sternum, this is your sternum. And this is your xiphoid process over here, right? Now in this, uh, all of you know that you have got a ribs over here. Let us say that this is your first rib. This is your first rib, okay? And next you have got your second rib. And you have got your third rib, okay? This is your third rib. And this is your fourth rib over here. Fourth rib. And this is your fifth. And this is your sixth rib. Okay, now if you count the intercostal spaces guys, how many intercostal spaces do we have? We have got, let us say, this is the first intercostal space, this is the second, right? This is the third intercostal space, fourth, fifth, as well as sixth. We have got six intercostal spaces over here. Now, all of you know that from my previous topics, I told you uh, regarding the subclavian artery, right? So let us say that this branch which is coming all the way down like this, this branch over here is called as your subclavian artery, right? So this branch over here is your subclavian artery. Now, this subclavian artery, this subclavian artery is basically divided into two parts, three parts, okay? So let us say that this is a muscle over here, right? So this muscle is called as anterior scalene muscle. So anterior scalene muscle is dividing this subclavian artery into three parts. Now the part that is present before is called as the first part. Behind this, behind the anterior scalene is called as the second part and after the anterior scalene muscle is called as the third part. So there are three parts of subclavian artery, okay? So subclavian artery has got three parts. Now out of these three parts, from the first part of subclavian artery, from the first part of sub, this is the first part, right? From the first part of subclavian artery, you have got a branch that is hanging down all the way like this, okay? So this is a branch that is hanging down all the way. Now this branch which is entering inside the thoracic cavity is called internal thoracic artery because it is inside the thoracic cavity, right? So this branch over here is called as your internal thoracic artery. internal thoracic artery this branch over here is called as your internal thoracic artery now this internal thoracic artery in the sixth intercostal space what will happen this will divide into two branches so till the sixth intercostal space it is internal thoracic artery and exactly in the sixth intercostal space this internal thoracic artery is going to divide into two branches what are these two branches so one is called as superior epigastric artery superior epigastric artery and the other one over here is called as musculophrenic artery musculo phrenic artery if you remember my oh, previous videos i have already talked there that the anterior intercostal artery will arise from the internal mammary artery in the first six spaces and after that it will arise from the musculophrenic artery i have told you Right, so from the 7th till 9th it will arise from, the anterior intercostal artery will arise from the musculophrenic artery. So this is what I told you in my previous video. So here will be the diagrammatic representation of that. And what did I tell you? That in each intercostal space how many um, pairs of anterior intercostal arteries are there? Two pairs, right? So in each intercostal space we have got two pairs of anterior intercostal arteries. So for example, let us say in the first intercostal space we have got two pairs like this okay in the second intercostal space we have got two pairs third intercostal space we have got two pairs of anterior intercostal arteries again two pairs again two pairs over here two pairs over here 
so two pairs of anterior intercostal arteries are arising from each intercostal space from 1 to 6 but from intercostal space 7 to 9 right these anterior intercostal arteries are arising from they are arising from the musculophrenic artery okay so this is the thing which i have already told you so let me write it down so the important thing here is that from the first till the sixth intercostal space right the anterior intercostal artery anterior intercostal artery arises anterior intercostal artery it arises from what it arises from internal thoracic artery or internal mammary artery right next important thing is from the 7th till 9th intercostal space in the 7th till 9th intercostal space the anterior intercostal artery arises from musculophrenic artery it arises from the musculophrenic artery okay musculophrenic artery and internal thoracic artery so this is all you need to know here these two are the very important things okay right right so as i have already told you this internal thoracic artery in the sixth intercostal space it is dividing into two now what is the use of this internal th uh, thoracic artery guys all of you know that whenever there is any kind of coronary artery disease right because of some atherosclerosis all of you know what is atherosclerosis atherosclerosis in the sense for example let us say this is an artery right now in this artery let us say there is a plague that is formed this is called as an atherosclerotic plague right so this is a plague that is formed now because of this atherosclerosis this is what is called as atherosclerosis because of the high cholesterol these atherosclerotic plagues are formed because of this do you think sufficient amount of blood can enter into the heart let us say this is coronary artery this is coronary artery right and uh, let us say that this is the heart of the patient now do you think sufficient amount of blood can enter into the heart no then what will happen this disease is called as coronary artery disease which will result in myocardial infarction okay now what we need to do what we need to do is that either we can remove these plagues or we if the plagues are too much if the block is more than 70 percent then we need to do a bypass surgery you heard of this bypass surgery so that bypass surgery is called as cabbage cabg coronary artery bypass grafting what is that cabg coronary artery bypass grafting so what is this coronary artery bypass grafting is that the procedure might be different but just roughly i'm telling you to give you an overview what i'm doing is that i'm cutting the vessel here i'm cutting the vessel here and finally i am joining these two vessels like this with an other artery so this blood vessel which i have kept over here right this blood vessel is a another blood vessel which have taken from the remaining part of the body i will tell you what is that so what will happen the blood whatever is coming here this blood will take a turn up right so it is bypassing this block and then it will supply to the heart this is called as coronary artery bypass grafting so this coronary artery bypass grafting whatever i have told to you right so this coronary artery bypass grafting whatever i have told you this is basically done this vessel whatever i have shown it to you here the vessel which we basically use is greater saphenous vein greater saphenous vein okay not only greater saphenous vein even your internal mammary artery which is also called as internal thoracic artery even that is also used as a bypass graft okay so internal mammary artery or internal thoracic artery is also used as a bypass graft what you do what you do is that you cut this distal part see you cut it out and attach it to the heart so this is what it has been done here if you can see lima in the sense left internal mammary artery or left internal thoracic artery see that has been directly cut and it is they have attached it to LED. What is LED? LED is left anterior descending artery, which is a branch of the heart here. Right? So, this is a branch of the left coronary artery. 
so they have directly attached it to the left coronary artery maybe there might be some block above here i think here there is a block i think that is why they have attached here so that the blood goes all the way like this down they have bypassed this okay so you understood now why do we use this so in case of coronary artery disease coronary artery disease we use this basically we basically use two most important vessels in the leg region we have got great saphenous vein and next we have got internal mammary artery so these are the things which we have got in the leg now if you look at the internal thoracic artery or internal mammary artery right let us see what are the branches that are coming out of this okay so instead of drawing a picture of that with just some lines and all instead of that you can better remember the mnemonic so that you can uh, recall it in your exam so let us discuss about the branches branches of internal thoracic artery now coming to this branches of internal thoracic artery just remember the mnemonic all of you know mp what is madhya pradesh all of you know that right if you wanted to go there you have to put a map and go m a p s without the maps it would be difficult for a person who don't know or who is first time visiting alone to that area so what does m stand for here the first important thing m stands for mediastinal branches m stands for mediastinal branches next important thing p stands for what p stands for pericardiophrenic artery p stands for pericardiophrenic artery third important thing what is third important thing m again m stands for musculophrenic artery musculo phrenic artery fourth important thing we have got a a stands for you know that from anterior from uh, internal thoracic artery what branches come out anterior intercostal or posterior intercostal anterior intercostal arteries anterior intercostal arteries next we have got fifth and sixth all of you know what are the fifth and sixth the fifth one is called as perforating branches perforating branches and the sixth one is your superior epigastric artery superior epigastric artery so these are these are the six most important branches which you know which you have to know regarding this topic right these are the six most important branches of the internal thoracic artery so this is the mnemonic which you can remember over here now out of all these branches which you know i have already told you that internal thoracic artery at the end it will divide into two branches what are these two branches so one branch over here is called as your musculophrenic artery and the other one is called as your superior epigastric artery right so these are the things which you already know now when i tell pericardiophrenic what do you mean by that it means pericardio in the sense it supplies your pericardium which pericardium fibrous pericardium fibrous pericardium and in the same way when i tell phrenic obviously all of you know that it supplies your diaphragm it supplies your diaphragm right so what are the things we have discussed here guys we have dis we are discussing right now about the internal thoracic artery in this internal thoracic artery i have already told you subclavian artery has got three parts with the help of this anterior scalene muscle right it is dividing and anterior scalene is dividing the subclavian artery into three parts right so this is the first part behind is the second part and this is the third part now here we have got internal thoracic artery uh each inter each uh, intercostal space has got two anterior intercostal so what are these these are anterior intercostal arteries 
anterior intercostal arteries from each space they finally divide into two parts over here what are these two parts one is called as a superior epigastric and the other one is called as a musculophrenic artery okay so from musculophrenic artery in the 7th to 9th intercostal space the anterior intercostal arteries they come out from which branch musculophrenic artery first to sixth anterior intercostal artery arises from the internal thoracic seventh to ninth intercostal space it arises from the musculophrenic artery this is very important to know and obviously internal thoracic artery is responsible for what it is responsible or it is used as an uh, bypass graft okay so these are some of the important things you need to know regarding the um, internal mammary artery or internal thoracic artery thank you so much for watching my video goodbye